day 12 of the ride udaipur done now today headed to jodhpur a slight change of plans so from here on the rest of the trip i'll be continuing solo the so next half of the trip i'm going to be alone a little later late start i woke up at 5 5:30 total starting at 6:30 so that i thought i'll reach jodhpur early and get some time to visit some places but it was really 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 cold outside and i stepped outside at 6:30 i don't have my thermal lining and even if i wear winter clothes underneath riding jacket by 11 it will become very hot and i have to again stop somewhere and remove everything so i thought might as well start a little late once daylight comes leaving the beautiful city of Udaipur i had four or five places to visit in mind but because we got busy yesterday with gaadi service and all that i got to visit only two places city palace and lake pichola but man it was beautiful the city palace was amazing if i had more time i could have gone to some other places like the jagmandir and some haveli museum and all are there anyways let's do that sightseeing in jodhpur and jaisalmer Riding a few hundred kilometers in the cold morning, I stopped for some chai and breakfast. So we've taken a deviation from the main highway to a small state highway. That's what Google is showing us. There's a main highway from Udaipur to Jodhpur, but what Google showed it is like one hour extra in that highway itself. So it showed us a main highway to Ajmer and then deviation to a state highway. So roads are narrow, broken at places. So anyways, wait before we head further. Remote, I thought I'll eat something. I was very hungry. It almost rode for two hours continuous. Stopped at a small shop here. Nice food, man. Save tomatoes, tomato. what they call this tomato save curry with roti so that is the only thing that is available here and i, I told him okay whatever is there you give please give me because i'm shit hungry and he's like ab kidhar se ho kahan se ho kidhar ja rahe ho he was fascinated by this thing so he gave me a nice treatment <laughs> made me a the tomato save curry or with roti and i is there param garam chai chai here in gujarat and rajasthan so damn good because of the local cravings the rich and creamy chai but when my body was uncontrolled to shivery after some time i don't know why is that i was riding i was feeling cold but not shivery here i was shivering like crazy anyways i wake up so chai recharged and now back on the road it is still cold i don't know how console is showing 29 degrees but i checked the temperature i mean the weather app it is showing 18 19 degrees and for some reason it feels colder and the hotel guy was like sir ab andar baithe andar baithe but thing is i'm the it was very cold so i was standing in the sun till they made the breakfast and and i was absorbing that warmth this is the problem with google chechi taking us through state highways and not the main highways oh, because of riding this cold without proper thermal or inner wears two hours of riding made me makes all the muscles contract the muscles of the neck face the shoulders arms so just after two hours of riding you do feel very tired because your entire body is in a contracted state so you are entering some sort of wild life here yeah. of oh, good that i found that hotel there otherwise i think for next few kilometers i'll not find anything oh man <laughs> i'm scared of this monkeys man because if i piss one of them off they attack in large groups oh she 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 completely off road <laughs> i thought till jaisalmer my gaadi will be very clean after the service and it will look good in in the desert and the but no google chit chat other plants there is a camel and it is jumping around this is what i have heard about rajasthan it is very 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 dangerous because his camels can appear from nowhere and they just it's not unlike cows they don't move slow they'll jump out of the bushes and they'll many deaths have happened especially riders they come fast right they will not know and hit and that you are done passing through villages
think we are entering Jodhpur city. It's just uh, 2.5 kilometers from here to the dormitory that I booked. I think it's some sort of an army area. A lot of fortified walls and all that. Yeah, Blue Town Cafe. All right, just checked in, had lunch, freshened up and now we are on to the first sightseeing location. There is a step well. I wanted to see this from a very long time. So I thought instead of going to the fort first, we'll go to the step well first and uh, have a look. Anyways, what I was warned by the receptionist in the hostel is that everywhere, uh, every uh, tourist destination will close by 5. So he asked me to make it fast if I want to visit any places. I am guessing because it's because of the cold, uh, by 5 it is going to get pretty cold outside. So maybe that is why they all shut everything by 5 because GP in Google it shows everything goes by 6 630 I'm guessing that's not the actual time I mean that might be the time during the summers but definitely not in winters I think looks like a pretty busy market oh man how will I ever park a bike anywhere oh man this is so much chaotic than I thought look at that fort oh man everywhere there's no parking signs where to park man The first time I came to know about Turji Ka Jalra was from my history textbook back in high school. Since then, the idea of a well where you can easily climb down to get access to water has always fascinated me. Turji Ka Jalra was nothing like I have seen in the pictures. It was much steep and scary in real life, mostly because I have a fear of heights. I managed to gather some courage and climb down the steps to take a closer look. The entire structure looked magnificent. The public isn't allowed to use this well anymore and maybe that's why there are a lot of fish thriving in that well. As you get closer to the bottom of the well, you can see the groundwater seeping in through the walls and flowing into the well. The Jalra was built in the 18th century under the leadership of Rani Tanwarji, the wife of the then king Raja Abhay Singh. help but spend some time relaxing, sitting there watching the fish and the calm waters right in the middle of the busy street. Since I was running out of time, I climbed upstairs, took one last shot of the Jalra before I headed to the next destination. Jalra. <laughs> yeah, it is so scary man. I have a fear of heights and this thing is very deep. Even the people have gone down and like are standing there and taking photos. So I was tempted to go there as well. Almost I went down but the, the uh, security guard stopped us. I mean, shot me and our, another guy who was coming down. But still it is so scary. <laughs> For some reason my knees were shaking. Because at some point there, even though there are steps till the end, at some points you feel like you are almost going to fall off, trip off and go straight into the water. So it was scary. Blue city, blue houses. I'm seeing blue houses now. Fort Yana. Ah, other kilometer. Fort Fort. Aage is left. Aage se mandir aega, mandir se left lena. I see a lot of cars and bikes going up, so I hope we'll get parking for bike as well. Oh. The view of Jodhpur. Oh, wow. Chala, let's see the fort. The most prominent structure that you see as you enter the city of Jodhpur is a Maharanga fort. It is built right on top of a hill and is visible from almost all of Jodhpur city. I 
got lost in the music for a couple of minutes and then I was quickly reminded of the little time I had left. So I rushed inside to see the fort. Marenga fort was built between the 15th and 17th century by the then Rajput rulers. The fort has seven different gates, some of the gates commemorating the victory of its rulers. The main entrance leads to the museum showcasing the palanquins, weapons, treasures, paintings, handicrafts and other royal collections. The fort has many palaces built inside. These include the Moti Mahal or the Pearl Palace, Full Mahal or the Flower Palace, Sheesh Mahal or the Mirror Palace, Sile Khana and the Daulat Khana. This is the Shringar Chowk. the courtyard where main proceedings and the anointment of new rulers used to happen the daulat khana has a nice collection of swords utensils cannons palanquins and other items I followed the crowd to the next hall which showcases the paintings by the artists of the kingdom. The designs on the carpet and the dresses used by the royal family are beautiful pieces of art. This is the Sheesh Mahal or the Mirror Palace. The entire structure is embedded with mirrors which they say used to light up the whole structure with the reflections of a candle light. This is the Phool Mahal or the Palace of Flowers. This is where the king used to have his private functions or entertainment sessions. The entire ceiling is lined in gold. It is so shiny, glittering and magnificent that the camera footage isn't showing any justice to what I saw that day. I followed the crowd to the corridors of the palace which overlooks the beautiful city of Jodhpur. Next hall was my favorite section of the palace the armory. It showcased swords and later guns used by the kings. I followed the crowd to other sections of the fort and then to a corridor which offered a great view of the blue city of Jodhpur. This is the Janki Mahal. It is built for the women folk of the palace. It has perforated windows through which the women folk could see the main events like the proceedings and coronation happening in the Shringar Chowk. This way the women folk could participate in the main events while being hidden from the public eye in the courtyard. The hallway of the mahal is lined with beautifully decorated cradles. This is what the Janki Mahal looks from the courtyard. After a quick tour of the fort from the inside, I got out of the fort to check out the canyons lined on the fort wall. The fort wall gives a nice 360 view of the plains below.
As I walked out of the palace, I noticed a souvenir shop. I went in and bought some goodies to keep the memory of Meringa Fort alive even when I got home. As the sun was setting in, I couldn't help but stand in awe and take in one last view of this beautiful and magnificent structure. Fort done and dusted. It was absolutely beautiful, man. Let us see that. <laughs> beautiful. Built on a mountain top so that they can see the land below. Ruled by the mayor. Marwars. This is not as big as the maybe area wise this is big. Not as detailed as uh, the city palace in the paper. I paid but it almost took two hours. I came here at uh, around I think I think at 2.30. Now it is 4.30. Yeah, two hours almost I took. Oh, see a city of blue city of Udaipur. Nice. Visited the two main places I wanted to visit in Jodhpur. One more uh, place I wanted to visit that is a palace museum. But what I heard uh, is that the museum is a small part attached to the palace and the entire palace is a five-star hotel. So there is no point in going there. So I think that's, that's it for Jodhpur. Jodhpur done and dusted. Clearly I had energy to ro roam around t today. Last time in City Palace I had a lot of headache by the time I finished seeing it. This time I could roam around and see it nicely. In peace of mind, full stomach. <laughs> I thought after riding 250 kilometers from uh, Udaipur, I will be dead tired and I'll not be able to see it. And, uh, and that too, it was very cold in the morning. So, enduring all that, and I came here, I thought I am done for the day. But luckily, got some energy to. As soon as I saw the photo, I was like, whoa. No, as soon as I saw the gel ride, it was like mind blowing. And I thought, wow, this is it. Then I think uh, around 3. 20 or 3.30, I thought I'll uh, drop the rest of the fort and go to the Udain Palace. But then again, then that's when I searched and I realized that uh, it is a uh, hotel rather than a fort. Yeah, two, three other forts I wanted to see, but those are small in size compared to this major fort. So I think I'm happy for now. <laughs> if you had come in a group, I would have definitely hired a guide. And there are guides available in the uh, in and around the fort. And they will take you through the entire tour for almost like two hours. But each guide costs 500 rupees. And many of the groups they were coming they were hiring guides so like it makes sense for for a group of four or five people me alone the ticket alone is 400 rupees in these places and then guide costing another 500 will be thousand rupees just for the entry so i don't have that much that kind of budget so i'm like and uh or else if, if you don't want a guide you can have the headphones where there will be different stations where you can listen to those headphones i mean listen to those audio or the important things but uh, then again what i heard is whatever is written in those stations whatever is displayed as information in the sessions they're just reading it out or a little little like a deep, in, in little explanation so if i have to do that uh, then it will take two two and a half hours and more than that to stay there and listen to all the stories so that's why i didn't take the headphones as well the headphones are actually i think 200 rupees or 250 rupees something like that if i had the time and if i had the patience yeah definitely i would have done it but i don't have the time and have the patience to do it for now <laughs> maybe someday later i just wanted to have a glimpse of it i'm so i'm so happy now headed back to the hostel staying for the night and tomorrow let's start jaisal there are two more places that I wanted to see. One is a waterfalls. Second is a lake, but both are far away. I will not make it during the daytime to and fro. I saw lakes since the city of lakes, so I think my lake appetite is filled or satisfied. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. See you in the next one where I head to Jaisalmer.